So WeWeb makes it very easy for you to update code and, and the state of things inside WeWeb, but how can we bridge external JavaScript to be able to work inside WeWeb itself? So if I were to say I want to have, I'll just take an example here, let's say I have a heading, I'm going to drag over heading here, and the heading is going to say, we want to just say hello, right? Hello. And then it'll just say hello. But it can be more interesting, right, to bind it to a variable. So I can go over to data, I can say let's add a variable, and the variable is going to be called header info, and we will call it, and we will give it, duh, 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 make it a type of text, and we'll take it, I have no info yet, and we will create this. Super. So now if I were to go over to your, go over to the header and I were to say, let's uh, click, not sanitize, let's click into the formula for the text. Instead of saying hello, I could say, instead of saying hello, I could instead have it use the vario, right? Like the header info that I have here. And then clean that up. And then all of a sudden it just shows the actual header info. Fantastic. Now, it's it, WeWeb makes it very easy for me to do something like, let's add a button, click, and if I were to click it, I could have an action on that button. Let's add a workflow to it. And on that action, I'm going to set a variable value, right? I'm going to change variable value, uh, and the variable I'm going to change is header info, and I'm going to change the header info to you clicked me, and then we'll say that's fine, and we'll close it. Uh, that way, if I were to go and preview it, I could click this and it says, you clicked me. Now, that's all fine inside of WeWeb, but what if we want to have a little bit of JavaScript, which is going to maybe operate on a counter or something? Let's talk about that in the context of script tag. Let's create a new script file, and we will say, uh, let's say we want to just have a set timeout, and we're going to have inside that timeout, I don't need the dash there, do, Cool. And we would want to say, we'll say const my counter equals zero, actually there'll be a let. And the we'll say every time this counter ticks, which is going to be comma 1000, we're going to say, in fact, let's do better. A start time equals date uh, dot now. And the we want to basically say that current const current time equals date dot now. Uh, minus start time. And then what we want to do is update a variable with whatever current time is, right? And we'll say, and we'll say const current equal current time divided by 1000, right? That way I have a current number of seconds. And then I want to basically set header info equals current. Now, this isn't going to work, right? Because header info isn't actually a global variable. But let's just grab this for a second uh, and talk about how we can make use of it. So we're going to copy the script tag actually as a WeWeb snippet because we're dealing with WeWeb right now. And we go over to JavaScript test and we will go to our page using the usual uh, script tag formula. We're going to go to, we're going to trigger a workflow, add a workflow to the page load, add an action, and it's going to be a custom JavaScript action edit the code and we're just going to copy over what we got from script tag to make that work so now we have a script tag that is now embedded uh, into our code and we'll say that and we'll say close and all of that and now uh, we're going to just refresh the page and we're going to find that the, uh, the i have no info yet is just sitting there and in the meantime if we were to open this guy up it's just announced that it has errors coming over and over because it says start time is not a function, which actually is that's a different kind of problem. Equal, oh, start time, yep, it's not a function. And we'll save that. And we'll say, okay, now it's saved on the server. We're going to refresh this. And now we don't have that same error, but we will probably get is instead the error of that there's no such variable that is called the, the, no such variable that is called current sx at that point. So we're going to say, which is a little console.log working over here. And we will say, all right, that's saved on server. That's fine. And now we're going to go back over here. We're going to see if working over here shows up just to show that the script tag is actually firing off. It says working over here. It fires once and only once. Of course, that's because it's set to a set timeout. Let's do a set interval. And that way it'll always uh, fire as long as we want it to. 
we go back over here, we do a refresh. And you'll notice that the it says I am working after this uh, the WeWeb page loads up, uh, it will say I'm working over here, and now it's just continuously going. But it doesn't do anything else. And the reason it's not doing anything else is because it's looking for something called header info that does not yet exist. And we're going and the and that's the reason why it's not updating header info, even though we all defined header info here as a variable. So how do we find that variable? And here we can, uh, then th this is where WeWeb's little icon up here really helps. Uh, this little developer-ish icon. Not moving to the developer editor, that's a different one that's used for doing a, a view components or what have you. But there's something down here that says advanced, hide, or show dev informations. You want it, to, probably it's saying show dev informations for you right now. And as a result, if you were to go take a look at your elements like this, there was an additional button you might have noticed before that's not currently present. But if we click on this and we say show dev informations, and we go to here, you'll see, hey, it looks, says copy ID. And copy ID is gonna be really important because yeah, that's the actual ID of the variable. Now, let's talk about how we can play with this for a little bit. The, and, and we can have ourselves just a little bit of fun. Let's go back to uh, the page where it says I have no info yet. And let's talk about how we were able to update that variable from outside the WeWeb context. And the near as I can tell, the developer documentations don't have a documentation of what we're about to do here, but it's all sort of stuff I was getting from the, from the dev tools over here. So there's a global variable that like WeWeb attaches uh, called we, uh, www.lib. And www.lib has a whole bunch of methods to it, a whole bunch of uh, members, a lot of which are prefixed with dub that can be pretty handy to work with. And one of them is called, if we scroll down here, www variable. And www variable allows you both get variables and update variables. And in order for you to get or update the variable, we're going to need to pass in the ID of that variable. And that's the reason why that copy that we just did is so important. So we can do dub lib just right here in DevTools. Dot dub dub variable dot a get value. And then the value we need to pass is header info. No, this is not going to work because it can say it can't find header info. But what it can do is find Nope, that was not right. What it can do is find, I go to data, click on copy ID here, and it says copy to clipboard, and we can paste this in. Oh, hey, look, we got to put in quotation marks, so we'll put in quotation marks because that's something that code requires us to do. And we do this, and it says, I have no info yet. Hey, it looks very much like the thing that we have over here in the title, because that's the thing we put in. So <clears throat> in addition to being able to, so that this allows us to get this information from any context. So this did not have to be from inside WeWeb. This could be from any arbitrary jobs could be used by doing www variable dot get value. Uh, as long as what the variable ID is and the variable ID, again, we get by doing the advanced dev informations. The, the next thing we can do is we can say, let's edit the variable value. Lib dot dot, dot variable dot update variable update value. In order for us to update the value, we're going to need to provide two arguments. The first argument is going to be the ID of the variable in question, and the second is going to be what we want to set it to. And then that will immediately change things in any view that you have. And so that updates the variable, and it updates any element that's bound to that variable because it's all part of the state management system. So it actually integrates very nicely into the rest of what WeWeb does. These two things, get value and update value, allow you to teleport information from an arbitrary JavaScript to uh, WeWeb itself. So let's talk about how we might do that by th through the timer that we had set up here. Now we know what the value, what this value is. Let's just copy this guy for a second, and we're going to go back over to our script tag, and we're going to say, okay, all oh, this is very nice. And instead of saying header info equals current sex, we're going to say, we're going to say we're going to have const new label equals time elapsed is. And we'll say const equals current math and we'll say const ms equals a sex what am I going to do here minus six dot 
for, and we'll then also say const minutes equals a sex dot a sex for divided by uh, right, this is a classic way of dividing things into minutes. Uh, const seconds equals math dot. The base is going to be x4 minus. So <clears throat> this is all just a little bit of of technique to go build out so, to create some separation for, for minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. And so we'll say is equal to plus minutes plus plus seconds plus MS, right? So now we can get zero seconds, milliseconds, and it's not gonna like prepend the stuff correctly, but, but who cares? The, the point is we're creating this new variable. And the, we're gonna say instead of what we want to send it to, we're gonna set the variable to this, this timer that's just running on the page. And this should have the effect, copy, or just prettify that thing, and this should have the effect of basically every second updating the value to this new time elapsed based on how the timer is based on how the timer is running. So now we've prettified it, it's already in the script tag, which means all we need to do is refresh the page. And it'll need to reload uh, the loader to see how all the stuff works. And then we're gonna wait for this to go. It'll probably error for the first few seconds as it says there's nothing for it to update just yet. It says current sex is not defined, and why is that not defined? It says current sex equals current time. Da, da, da. Oh, because I have a typo in here. There we go. And we'll say prettify that. And we'll go back over to here. Whenever you're creating code, you gotta worry about the typos. And of course, it looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, but it starts to tell a story, right, of I've got my seconds, which are just iterating upward. And, of course, we can start to do things like saying we only want the very top of our milliseconds or what have you. Maybe the milliseconds we don't think are nearly as exciting to show here. Maybe you want to show it every 500 milliseconds or what have you. But this just shows you how you can focus on just this little thing here, which is this timer, right, that we're doing on the outside or it could be like related to capture or some other feature that you're trying to bring into your WeWeb environment. And you don't need to be owning all the concerns, right, by doing it, trying to force it into the, the, the no-code context because you you can build this bridge and the way that we're building this bridge is through using this dub lib and the member of it called dub dub variable and making use of update value and then of course we can also say let's const relay value equals dub lib dot dub dub variable dot get value and then you just pass it that same key And then we can just do a console.log relay value, uh, just to say value we web is the relay value, uh, and we copy that. And now this sort of allows us to show how we can get it both in and out. Where we're going to do update variable, we're going to then do the get variable. Let's test that out. full thing load yeah, and says the value in WeWeb is whatever it was so now we can see how we can text of our JavaScript get code out of WeWeb and how we can from the context of our WeWeb get code out of our JavaScript without having to do any super crazy fancy bridges it's just a one line of code and being able to get this stuff from inside your script tag and if you want to learn more about uh, script tag and how we do hard things that are at the, the, the corner of no code and low code to get more superpowers out of our no code tools, I would encourage you to uh, check out what we're doing over at State Change AI, where we have a combination of daily office hours. We do, we have a community where we talk about these things, as well as providing tools to try to make it easier for us to do the hardest 5% of our no code, low code projects. Hope to see you there soon.